So I've had a handful of coworkers that work in security or web dev comment on my game development projects and say that they felt uh, intimidated by what they saw, like, I could never do that. And I wanted to try and demystify a bit about what game development is actually like. And I could have made a straw man argument and talked about uh, Unity Engine and the, the physics engine that they give you out of the box, or uh, the 3D stuff that's abstracted from you. Uh, but I figured I'd, I'd rather make a steel man argument and show some of the more heavy duty code that I've done from scratch and how even this quote unquote heavy duty stuff is still actually pretty manageable. And beyond that, even if you do feel intimidated, you know, this is the kind of thing where I went and I reviewed some old high school trigonometry to write this code. And then I finished it and then I forgot all about it and moved on to more high level design decisions. So that demo you just saw earlier, that was running off of this code. It's only about 30 lines of code. This is written in ActionScript, but most of this should be pretty readable regardless of what languages you're familiar with. So to start off, we're defining a handful of variables. We have uh, X move and Y move, which is our horizontal and vertical momentum. We have gravity, which is a constant force that is going to act on the ball. We have our radius, which I'm getting through the height. Uh, the height of the movie clip can be gotten through this property, which is of course the diameter for a ball, and I'm dividing it by two. And then we have an array of points. And uh, these points are just a bunch of different angles along a circle. You can see, you know, 0, 30, 60, uh, 45, 60, 90, and all the way around. And uh, mostly the, the idea with getting these points is that we want to convert all of these angles into x and y values. Uh, and if you remember your high school, algebra, high school trigonometry, uh, you know that we have our, uh, our cosine, which is our, our adjacent length over the hypotenuse and our sine, which is our opposite over the hypotenuse. Um, and so we can convert an angle into these x and y coordinates using sine and cosine. So we create a, an array to hold all of these values as we generate them. We loop through all of these points. As we go, uh, these sine and cosine functions require uh, an argument in radians. So we do our conversion here, and then we just drop the cosine and sine into x and y values on this new object and uh, add this new object into our array. We're storing them as x, y values because we need the x, y values of these points because these are, are essentially the collisions that we're going to be checking for in order to apply force. Uh, so moving on, we have on enter frame equals function. This is an action script term that essentially means that all of the code within this block is going to be executed every frame indefinitely forever. Um, y move, our uh, vertical momentum is constantly going to be acted upon by gravity. So that's going to be added on every frame. And then our direct X and Y positions are going to be modified by said momentum. And this is the last and most important part of the script. We're already pretty close to the end. First of all, we're going to loop through shape flags. That's going to be those X and Y values that we got from this points array earlier. And for each one of those, we're going to check and see if there is a collision. We have parent surface. Surface in this case is the object we're colliding with. So this black ring here in this demo is our surface. So we're checking to see if the surface collides with a point at this x value and this y value. And we start by taking the x and y, which in this case is the center of the ball, and then we add an offset, which is the sine and cosine values that we generated earlier. And if you remember from trigonometry, these actually give you ratios corresponding to the unit circle. So that assumes the radius of the circle is 1. And our ball is larger than that, so we multiply the radius to each one. And this third argument, true, has to do with the way hit test works. Uh, basically, what we're doing is with a shape flag, which is what we are doing here, 
we check to see if an area like this, this white blob, is intersecting with the point, which would be this point or this point. For this instance, it would return false because there's no intersection. For a case like this, you would return true. If this third value were to be false, then it would instead be checking to see if a point is colliding with a bounding box around the shape. It's a bit more performant, but for our cases, we need uh, a bit more accuracy because if shape flag were to be false, uh, we'd have something like this return true because this dot, despite not being within this shape, is actually uh, within the bounding box. So with no shape flag, this would be considered a collision. So with all of that in mind, we are looping through every point, and for every point, we check to see if that point is colliding with our environment. If it is, we push the entire ball back in the opposite. Here we have a negative and here we have a positive. We're pushing it in the opposite direction of that offset. So you can imagine, for instance, if uh, our ball is touching a slope like this, it's touching the slope here, and so we want to push the ball back out this way. And then on top of pushing the ball directly, we do this so that the ball doesn't immediately intersect and fall through the environment. We also add this same offset to the X move and Y move values. We want it to influence the momentum so that the ball will actually go along uh, a surface or roll along it. Now at first this might seem a little counterintuitive. For instance, if you have this ball intersecting here, then it's going to push the ball out this way. But keep in mind that force vectors are additive. So you have a force coming out here, but it is being added on to the constant pull of gravity down here. And so you have something in between that leads the ball to roll this way. Uh, so we can go ahead and take a look at what this produces here again. And that's really it. 30 lines that give you a pretty accurate ball rolling simulation. Uh, now, there are a handful of things that I could have done differently here, and this is actually not the same code exactly as what appears in the pinball demo I gave at the beginning of the video. There are certain optimizations. For instance, um, you can see here within the while statement, we have uh, the x being multiplied by the radius and the y being multiplied by the radius, and there's no reason that these couldn't have been added as properties within this object so that you wouldn't have to compute this every single time the loop iterates. It could be more general. For instance, uh, these increments don't have to be hard-coded. I could make it more granular so you could set what these intervals are and choose between whether you want the physics to be more smooth or whether you want the program to be more performant. There are some edge cases that I didn't account for, but I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you can make something that looks fairly complex with not a whole lot of code and hopefully give uh, non-game developer developers an idea of what game development looks like and, and maybe make it look a little bit less intimidating. That was really all I had. I hope you got something out of this, and if you did, thanks for watching.